So this would be kind of how I would define whether or not a player was, let's say, too flat yeah. or too upright. Okay, and that would just be if I kind of extend a line out of the left arm, okay, if that shaft gets, let's say, below it, I would say that's gonna be a little bit too flat, right? And then we want, the, I would say, we want that shaft to be a little bit above that left arm extension. Yep. And then certainly, right, we can certainly you know, go too much that way, right? But for me, when I'm looking at, you know, an ideal top of the backswing position, I'm looking for where's that shaft in relationship to an extension of the lead arm. Hey guys, so we're super excited to announce that for the month of April, from today through April 30th, we're gonna be doing a 30 day money back guarantee. That means if you haven't tried out CogornoGolf.com, now is the time to do it completely risk free. If you try it out and don't like it for any reason, simply send us a message. We'll send you every single penny you invested right back, no questions asked. CogornoGolf.com is where you can send in your swing so we can see what you're actually doing, help identify priorities, tell you specifically which which drills to do, how many reps to do, how many days per week. It's an awesome practice plan you're gonna get. We're there to guide you through the entire process. There's coaches there 24 seven, answer any questions you have, talk you through the feels, what to expect, how to work on things, it's awesome. I really think it's equally as effective, if not more effective than in-person coaching. You're gonna absolutely love it. Again, April 8th through April 30th, 30 day money back guarantee, would love to see you there. Hey guys, what's up, Eric here. We're outside at the beautiful Atlantic Beach Country Club with a man to my left, I'll intro in just a second. In this video, we're gonna talk about the perfect top of backswing and really how your top of backswing can make a huge influence on your transition move and ultimately your downswing. And we brought out the best of the best to help me talk about that. To my left, Mr. TJ Eaton. If you don't know TJ, um, we're gonna link all of his info down below. I'm sure a lot of you have seen his videos before. He's got an awesome Instagram page. Um, uh, TJ has all the awards, right? He's got Golf Digest, what, best in state? Best in state, yeah. Best young teacher. He was a teacher of the year when he was back in Indiana. The guy's been all around, moving around the country. One of the best teachers that I've ever seen. I watch him really closely um, online and really, really look up to him. And, and I think his mechanical knowledge of the golf swing is the best of the best. And so I'm excited to uh, have you out here today. Thank you for yeah, having us. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it, man. So top of backswing yeah. position, you know, one of the things, TJ, um, that comes up a lot in golf, right, is like how much the backswing does or does not matter. Um, and I'd love to sort of talk about that. Maybe some checkpoints for the top of the backswing. And even though it is a sort of still shot of movement, right, that's happening, sure. maybe some of the things that we see at the top most common and how they really affect um, the downswing issues. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the top of the backswing definitely matters, right? It's really important. Uh, it kind of prepositions us um, uh, to make the either the most adjustment or the least adjustment in our golf swing on the way down and the downswing is obviously a very short duration so we're trying to make as few adjustments as possible in a really short duration i, I like that very well said yeah. you know it's always like the hey does the back swing matter or doesn't matter whatever and i think a lot of the conversation is it really matters to your point to the degree of which it affects your downswing stuff Definitely. is that fair yeah absolutely and i would even say uh, depending on the player and the skill level of the player it may matter even more for the club player uh, mm. simply because they're not as well practiced and, and don't have quite the uh, the tools to manage what maybe a tour player may do at the top. Yeah. So I find myself more often than not spending a lot point. of time with the top of the backswing for a lot of club players. And they're probably not practicing as much, Correct. right? Maybe not as skilled, right? To be able to manage that during the Correct. downswing. That's good, that's, that's, that's true, that's a good point. So maybe like the less you hit balls, unless you practice, like shoot, that top of backswing might be the really most important. important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, maybe let's talk a little bit about, you know, and I don't think we need to say this is, even though the title of the video is the perfect type sure. of backswing, but I think more so like, what are some common issues we see? Right. <clears throat> I know there's one that we talked about that I want to make sure we address for sure. And then um, why, why maybe a shaft position, right? Shoulders would affect the downswing. Sure. So maybe if we go like the across the line version first. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yep. So if I take my set of position, one of the things I see a lot, TJ, um, at the top of the position is a player who gets the shaft. Yeah, you can see the shaft wherever. Right. But let's start with maybe a shaft that gets too far across the line and maybe in particular without a lot of width. Sure. Can we look at that first? Yeah, absolutely. Something like this? Yep. So like what would be the reasons that a golfer would do that? 
And then why does that affect the downside? Yeah, so it's a great question. The first thing that I see and I come across on the less and T more often than not are players trying to identify movement strategies to create length of backswing, right? So they're trying to, trying to create travel to the hands, arms, and club. The task is obviously to hit the ball hard and far with whatever club's in my hands. So players are trying to find the path of least resistance to get there. So the number one thing I'll see for players that start to overflex the arms, let's say, yeah. right, which could be a precursor to the club going across the line, is a lack of rotation in the pelvis and torso. So mm. there's a minimal rotation in the pelvis, minimal rotation in the torso. They're trying to make up the difference somewhere else to create substantial travel to the golf club. And what they're left with are, we could say the arms, the flexing in the arms. We can then move down to the wrist. They'll start changing their wrist angles as they get up to the top. Just whatever they can find to create a sufficient length of backswing to the golf club. Got it. And a lot of this, I'm going to repeat some of the stuff you yeah. say, so bear with me as we go. Sure. So a lot of the over, over flexing of the arms or that across the line position really is rooted in maybe a lack of turn sure. or, or just maybe even a lack of let's say how their body works in the backswing. Sure. It could be multiple things, yeah. right? Yeah, so the body would be number one, yeah. right? Moving on from there, uh, we could look at other ways players can create length to the backswing. The most common um, error I'll see is a lack of uh, radial deviation or wrist hinge, the so cocking upwards to the uh, hands and club, right? That's gonna create some travel to the shaft. And if I don't have that, again, then I need, I need to find another solution. I need to find something to supplement how I can then move the club further back, Got say it. back and around towards the target. So if I do, let me teach, let me try to have you up here yeah. just for a bit. So if I make my normal swing, let's say, and I don't, let's say I don't have enough turn. Sure. So I would like pelvis. Yep. So let's say I don't have enough turn. So I'm running out of turn early. Yep. Now I can't turn torso enough. Correct. So I'll sequel. And so now from here, like for me to get the club over my shoulder, then comes in the maybe excessive trail arm bend. Sure. Potent, probably too internally rotated yep. at so, that point in time. Yep. And then we'll also see a lot of times we'll see uh, too much adduction in the left arm. So left arm will start yeah. to move more across the chest. We'll start to see that in abduction in the trail arm, which is that trail arm moving back and around the yeah. rib cage, right? So without any rib cage or torso rotation, the player just ends up moving the arms independently of the body and like moving a around. fake depth Correct. sort of movement. Yeah, absolutely. So to be able to really fix that, we would start with, hey, let's make sure we get this moving correctly. Correct. Right, have enough of turn and tilt on my way back. Correct. That way I can, we'll just keep saying turn, right? Enough of my torso yep. so that I can get the club far enough, travel far enough away from the ball without the arm bending and the Absolutely. trail shoulder. Yep. Yeah, okay. Definitely. And so let's say, I, let's say I'm that guy, right? I come in, come in for a mm. lesson, we're down here and I'm, I'm doing the lack of turn I'm doing the arm, which like a little bit later you might see that I have a little bit of that going sure, on, right? The yeah. lack of turn, uh, trail arm over bends, internal from this side. When I say internal from this side, just to confirm, we're talking like my forearm goes this way, Correct. right? Elbow behind me yep. versus this would be externally rotating internally. So this is like the flying elbow, sure. right? Sort of look, which gets the club here. A lot of times with the flying elbow too, my trail wrist isn't extended enough compared to me being in this sort of Definitely, fashion. Yeah. So anyway, let's say I'm that guy, right? I come in, like, all right, dude, like, you're not turning enough. Right. Or you're getting this arm <clears throat> action at the top. W would we start with, like, let's start turning? Would we do, like, would you do the that and the kind of arm at the same time, potentially? Definitely. You have to coordinate them together, right? And I think right. what a lot of students will struggle with is they'll want to identify the one piece, right? They'll look at a video or they'll see their swing and they'll say, okay, this is the one piece I want to attack. But what we have to understand is that we have to learn how to coordinate multiple changes in one go to make yeah. this effective, right? So we have to tackle both, let's say, the rotation and the structure of the arms at the same time. Got it, yeah. So that makes perfect sense. I think a lot of us try and uh, play that root cause, do one thing and one thing only. Absolutely. But a lot of times, like, you gotta do the corresponding other thing or the thing that affects, you know, maybe even later in the swing at the same time sure. to see some sort of net effect <laughs> of the ball flight, right? Right. So let's do that. Let's, let, let's say I wanna, I wanna turn more and I wanna get my arm um, less internally rotated and, <coughs> and let's say flexed too much. Sure. How, how might we start that? Okay, so we have to identify where are we missing turn, okay? Could be the pelvis, could be the torso, could be a combination of the two, right? So go ahead and set up to it. Yep. Okay, so as we go up to the top, <coughs> excuse me, perfect. One thing we're looking at is this trail leg and this trail hip, right? So we can see that right hip has moved up, back, and around. 
and that's allowed our pelvis to turn, can I borrow this for a second? Yeah. About 45 degrees, okay? So 45 degrees would just be a baseline number that we might use plus or minus a few degrees in other direction. But a 45 degree hip turn would give us a better chance to make a larger torso rotation. Got it. <coughs> yeah, you can cough too, let it rip, man. Sorry. So 45 degrees with <coughs> my hips, right? <coughs> yep. As I go back. Yep. <coughs> and I'm allowing my trail leg to extend, right? Not stay bent. Correct. To be able to, to help that motion. Yep. So it would be like some areas we would, we would start with. Yep. Right? Okay. And then from there, from the face on view, what we're looking at is how much the torso has turned. So 90 degrees would be, let's say, from left shoulder to right shoulder, just about pointing at the ball. Okay. Okay. And some players are going to get more, some players are going to get less, depends on a few other factors. Flexibility, range of motion, right? Your mobility. Yeah. Um, but that's just a good general reference, right? Can I get my shoulders to turn about 90 degrees, right? Left shoulder kind of uh, at the ball at that point. Got it. So hips turning, <coughs> shoulders turning. Yep. And then when I'm at the top there, let's say with my with my arms and so like just to clarify that I'm doing that really <coughs> right, to be able to set myself up for and allow yes correct right or good arm wrist motions at the this top. This would be a precursor being able to control what your arms can and can't do. So like a lot, and I think this is a point I just want to like one more sentence on. I want to beat to death, but like I think a lot of golfers would see an error at the top with the arms and wrists. Yeah go right to that right. without fixing the body stuff. Yeah, most that's common thing one. I'll see, absolutely. And that's why, yeah. that's why it, it becomes so um, difficult for that player to change, right? It's they're attacking the, the one thing that's the most visible, but they don't understand the pieces that kind of led up to that. Yeah, got it, perfect. So let's say I'm getting the <laughs> hip and shoulder motion and I'm starting to turn more, right? I'm starting yep. to feel like what that feels like. What about, what about this part? <clears throat> right, so, <clears throat> We could have a player that has sufficient pelvis rotation, sufficient torso rotation, and then just because of their concept of wanting to hit the ball harder and farther, right, they'll start to move that right elbow more up, back, and around, and they'll start to overflex it, and they'll start to, you know, potentially get the elbows farther apart and get that club up and across, right? Yeah. So the one thing that I would then suggest to this player is we need to create a little bit more width. So I'll tell players all the time, hey, let's get the handle of the club as far away from the chest as we can manage, okay? And then the next thing I'll tell them is we're gonna to try to squeeze the elbows together as tightly as we can for the entire duration, right? So we're gonna keep that handle of the club as far away from your torso as you can. And you're gonna squeeze your elbows together as tightly as you can for as long as you can. And as we're, perfect. As we're doing that, um, obviously when you're standing there with them, you're like more or less, more or less guiding them through feels. If they're by themselves, you know, this might be something where they're video, <laughs> yep. maybe throwing like a tour striker ball in. It's pretty much the only training aid I'll use. Yeah, yeah tour okay. Striker training. And that helps with the, squeezing the elbows closer, right. yep. pushing the arms away. Um, so as I'm working through this, I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the turn again, like with the turning piece, maybe I have 45 and 90 as a reference. Um, but that's where I could use video to check that too. Sure. Like, hey, am I turning enough? Right. I feel like I'm turning a lot <laughs> or a little. But am I actually using video? Yep. And then, okay, so the, elbow, so the whole backswing then when I'm feeling that, really, if I'm that player, the whole backswing, I'm feeling like the elbows are staying squeezed together. Correct. And the um, butt of the club and hands are pushing farther from my shoulder. Absolutely, yep. Got it. And as we do that, like if I did those pieces correctly, yep. I would anticipate this shaft would start to change. Yeah. Right, as a byproduct of my elbows not separating, Definitely. my trail shoulder. Yep. And so that would start to get the shaft more, well, maybe let's call it like neutral at the top. Neutral. Is that uh, fair? For me, neutral would be, uh, let's say, a little pitched. Right? Yeah. So, so kind of pointing a little bit more behind you. Yeah. Yep. And as we go, and we, let's say we go back to the player whose trail shoulders internal, yep. um, and the shafts are down the line, like why don't we like that in the first place? Like what effects? So it, 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 can, be, it can be functional for some players to be there. Yeah. The challenge for most golfers, though, is they're not equipped with the tools to take that shaft that's up and, let's say, over the head yeah. or more around the head and then move the club head back up and around in transition right. to line it up. Yeah. Right? They just don't have the tools to make that work. And so we would see, I mean, I, I see that all day, right? Oh, yeah. I would see from here almost always yep. a shaft in transition where the trail shoulder stays internal. Absolutely. Excessively. Yep. Shaft pitches steep. Too vertical. Right. And so, like, and then from there, obviously, there's going to be some form of adapting fix. to that, yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, 
I see that pattern all the time at the top. This is one of the things that t he is so good on his Instagram, and there's some before and after pictures. We'll, we'll put a link that you can see of like where the player was and then where their shaft what got to, sure. right? Which would almost always be like here to like here, mm -hmm. right? And then of course, there were always pictures after that, but I would assume they were doing something yep. compared to neutral-ish. And then, and then probably most a lot of them, I would bet, didn't have to think a ton about what happened in transition Correct. once they changed the top. Yeah, they kind of got off to a head start and yeah. where it needed to be later in the downswing. Got it. And so as we start to come down from there and how this affects the shaft in transition, for me to have the shaft angle, let's call it neutral, like um, butt of the club near the ball target line. Sure. As I go to the top, I got my turn. I'm squeezing my elbows together, right? I'm pushing the butt of the club away from me if I'm that player. And then as I transition, as I start to come down, what would make that shaft angle neutral would be a trail shoulder that's, um, it doesn't need to be externally rotated, but it's not gonna be excessively internally rotated. Sure. It would be neutral with the butt of the club. Yep. So, um, you know, the point being where you go at the top is gonna have a massive effect on that. Big time. And I wanted to go over that one, TJ, first, because I personally see that a lot. I think a lot of um, handy, higher hand, well, just kind of all players really, but have that pattern. But on the flip side of that, also, if someone has the opposite effect, mm. right, someone could yeah, potentially go back and, and even be excessively over here. They might even be kind of this way sure. at the top. You would give them some form of the opposites to yeah. find middle? Yeah. So then we would look at, okay, you know, why is the shaft too pitched, right? We can get into the forearm rotation. We can get into the adduction, the abduction, the arms moving kind of in and around the torso. Yeah. Um, but there's a really important relationship that I'll look for to kind of, you know, give a player a reference as to where that club is, right? You want to walk through that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so go ahead and let's go up to the top for a moment. So this would be kind of how I would define whether or not a player was, let's say, too flat yeah. or too upright, okay? And that would just be if I kind of extend a line out of the left arm, okay? If that shaft gets, let's say, below it, I would say that's going to be a little bit too flat. Right, and then we want, the, I would say, we want that shaft to be a little bit above that left arm extension. Yep. And then certainly, right, we can certainly, you know, go too much that way, right. But for me, when I'm looking at, you know, an ideal top of the backswing position, I'm looking for where is that shaft in relationship to an extension of the lead arm. That's so good. And I just want to close on one piece. If we could put that back yeah, up absolutely. there for a second. I would bet what you see with the shaft then, you would see like an effect in transition based on where it is most of the time. Yep. So like the player who gets it too under here yep. is then going to pitch it over that line in transition. You got it. And the player mm -hmm. who's too well, and then the player who's neutral there probably stays neutral. And then the player who's across it, as long as they're not narrow with it, probably does a decent job of getting it back on. Right. Is that fair? Absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, if, if we have a player that, you know, is, let's say up and across, right, they would have to change their trail arm mechanics yeah. to kind of get that club to come back and around, let's say on plane or get it kind of pitched back at that target line, right? Yeah. Um, whereas for most players that don't have the ability to do that or aren't well equipped enough to manage that in a very short duration, you know, That's we'd right. certainly want, them, yeah, exactly. We <clears throat> want to be a little bit closer to where they're going to be on the downswing anyway. Yeah. And then you have the players that go too much and then as they come on down, they're going to pull the handle down and the shaft's going to kick up and get a little steeper. Perfect. So <laughs> this is so good. Like we could do like an hour of him and I talking on just this topic, but I'm going to try and bring it in here. So it's like not an hour long. Um, I think a couple of main bullet points on this one, the body motions that you do during the backswing are going to correlate with where your arms and hands and wrist and club go, which is then going to correlate with what happens in transition. Now, if you manage that all well, or even doesn't look pretty, then you're good, you're fine. But if you don't manage the transition downswing well, start with making sure the body motion works properly, how then that affects the arms and hands. If you're that player that gets over here, the squeezing of the elbows and the hands pushing away from the shoulders um, to straighten the arms a little bit and have the shaft and club more neutral is gonna make your life a lot easier coming down. And I really like looking at that arm line to the shaft, like that's such a good checkpoint for when you guys are recording yourself, where am I at? What, what should I feel? And most times, whatever side you are at the top, you're going to tend to want to go the other way in transition. Definitely. Is that pretty good? Yeah. A plus? A plus. A plus. 
So thank you, dude. That was Absolutely, awesome yeah. um, for a first one. We got a lot more mechanics to talk about, but that's the top of backswing. If you guys did enjoy this video, we're gonna put another card on the screen to a similar top of backswing where I kind of talk you through troubleshooting the top things. TJ and I, again, we could talk for an hour about the forearm rotations, wrist mechanics. If you want more detail on this sort of stuff, we'll put that. I'm also gonna link to golf.com. We'd love to see you there.